And we are in game number one of the third and final set of the day. Guys, everyone, welcome to Hard vs. Jibaton game number one. We we'll see down south, Hard playing with Hans in the blue color. The map for the first game of the series is gonna be uh, Ravines and then Jibaton. Playing in the northwest with the Lithuanians. It's going to be in the red color. So we're gonna talk about the civilizations in a moment. Is that a link for the, the mod? Let me check. Oh yeah, I see it now. Alright, thank you. I'm just going to save it. And uh, let's talk about the saves over here. Hey B, hi hi. Happy New Year to you too as well. Who Who is going to get the New Year in 40 minutes? 6 hours ahead of me. I imagine that's probably going to be you, Bailo. Or are you only 5 hours ahead? Anyway, for the civilizations... Hard playing with the Hans over here is going to get 50% accuracy on trebuchets as opposed to 15%. We also have for Hard 10 and 20% cheaper cavalry archer units in the castle and imperial ages. 100 units. Okay, so so five hours ahead only. Okay, all right. Um, that should still be we we should still be casting these games I would imagine. So yeah. And besides that, the Huns will have also 200 population support from the get-go at the expense of 100 wood at the beginning of the game. And for the team bonus, they get 20% faster working stables. Jibutan playing with Lithuanians up in the north instead is going to have with this civilization 150 extra food. It's going to get 10% faster moving skirm, spear units, and one extra attack on Knights and Light Shape per each relic garrison up to plus 4 attack, up to 4 relics. For the team bonus, Jibutong Civilization is going to give him 20% faster work in monasteries instead, compared to the Huns with the faster work in stables. Which should allow him to go for monks a little bit earlier and potentially try and contest the relics a little bit sooner. Now we'll see. He does have two relics very close to his base. But then the rest over here, these two will be closer to hard space. And even the center one, which should technically be very even, I think is favoring the heart a little bit. Might be, might be, but it's hard to tell. I think because of the way that the, the isometric view works in the game over here, it might actually be about the same distance. I'm not really sure. That's something that I would like Catcherish to implement at some point. Maybe a measuring tool, right? You select two things and then you just get a, a counter. Regardless, the walls are coming up already for Jibotan. Let's take a look at Hearts map generation first. What do we get? It's gonna have one gold on the back. He's got one gold on the right hand side. We have a stone on the right hand side, another stone on the left hand side. This one's going to be exposed. And these will be probably a little bit easier to protect. These ones, they are kind of stylish and backish. These are super forward. Mm, but he should be able also to, to wall himself up without too many issues, right? Let me take a look to see if this is actually closed. It is not. So he would have to go for something like this. Right, if you wanted to protect those resources. Which is actually kind of pricey. A pretty big wall for the wool player over here. Not really sure if he's going to go for it. I think we're, we're probably going to see just local walls around resources. Jibutong, on the other hand, he's already started going for the walls. Though he's not finished with his layout yet. And for his map generation, he's got a beautiful gold on the back. Absolutely fantastic. There's a gold forward. A stone forward. And then we have... On the back over here, a uh, stone as well. Pretty easy for him to secure as well. Just going for some walls like this. Shouldn't be too expensive. And the great thing about these walls, and then if he can go for something like from here to here and then here towards the TC, is that he not only protects the gold and the stone, but he also protects the wall line over here. And depending on how he goes for the walls on the right-hand side, he could potentially go for something like this, for instance, and even secure this one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> He's just going for... A giant diagonal wall from the back gold to the back wood. He won't be able to secure this one. And archer pressure, potentially cavalry archers in the castle age from hard. Will push units away from here, unfortunately, for Jibotan. We'll see, of course. We are quite some ways off from getting to that position in the game yet. There we are. Fuelage is going to be here very soon. For both these players, hearts going up a little bit sooner. Jibutong's getting a little bit of extra idle. 
DC time. Not too much. Hey, in green heaven. Hi. Yeah, the walls that Jibaton's going for on the left-hand side are what I was kind of hoping to see from him, but the walls on the right-hand side, they are not the best. So if he a little bit later for Jibaton, he gets cleaned up! And hard, he's got a scout over here, not enough HP to go and try and take the villager, no, no, no. I'll just have to bail from here. Maybe try to get some scouting information, but it's unlikely he'll be able to get any damage done, right? Unless he jumps into, or he runs into a 1 HP villager or something that I don't think we are going to have from Jibaton. No! So, the bull player, just trying to get away, and he's going to walk away, yes. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Hart is starting to go for the walls. Kind of similar to what I was expecting to see from the bull player on the right-hand side. The left-hand side, we don't have a potential wall layout yet. The stable's already up, and we have the scouts on the way. Jibotong. Jibotong, he doesn't have a stable, does he? No, no. He doesn't have any gold miners, so we're not going to see archers over here. If he does not go for a stable, it's just going to be a play for the castle age for Jibutong. Interesting, because he's not really gone up on a strong enough worker count that would allow him to fast castle, so this is, this is kind of rough. Hey, there we go. Thank you. Vanilla Donut. Uh... Big raid, Dave. Holy crap. Man, thank you so much for the raid. Dave. <laughs> Big shout out. It's very much appreciated, man. I hope you had a great stream. I imagine you're not covering the third series then, right? But did you enjoy the first two? Let me know. And uh, yeah, welcome everyone. We are casting game number one, a Jibutong versus Heart. They're playing with Lithuanians and Huns respectively. I hope you had a great time. On Dave's stream. And uh, we'll see who moves on over here to the goal league as well. We already had two players move on today. This is going to define with the third player of the day is to move on to the next stage, of course. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you, Baila. You sound sick. Are you okay? I am sick. And I am okay at the same time, but I will have to mute myself from time to time to cough. You know do sick stuff <laughs> sneeze and whatnot but for the time being it is what it is I, I just want to provide coverage for the series so I just went live anyway yesterday I was actually worse so it's not too bad and hopefully tomorrow I'm going to be better already so hearts coming in it's got three scouts already quick walls coming out from Juatong not enough though and the scouts will get a villager there we go I keep some roaming around, might be able to find some extra damage around the wall lines. Not this one, it's a really quick wall. Up in the north, there's another quick wall coming out from Jibotong, and he does manage to secure his second wall line as well. So the scouts, they must be careful. They could potentially get a villager over here. They get on top of the hill, it's not going to take too many hits for him to get a villager down, but he would be getting dangerously close to the TC. There we are. Get well soon, thank you. Sick caster. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, and the scouts. In the end, they get cleaned up for the most part. Another villager goes down, so that was two dead villagers. One around the berries over here. I don't think the corpse is there anymore. And then the one over here right next to the hunting. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Jibotong. Yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, he will be under too much pressure, right? Hard. He's done a really good job defending himself. He's even going to go as far as to connect the walls over here as opposed to just walling towards the TC. And he should be in a, in a pretty good spot. The walls that he's gone for already allow him to secure this goal on the, uh, on the back. Which is fantastic. He should be able to secure himself properly if he completes the walls up over here. But he's sending the villager already. And then we have the stone on the right hand side as well. The berries and the woodlands. As well, the wounds are very, very important too. So it's gonna be fine. And Jibotong is the player to go for maybe not the best walls, especially with this goal on the back being part of the walls. It could potentially signify a lot of pressure coming in from Heart around this area, but he does manage to secure at the very least one goal over here on the back. Thanks so much for the follows, guys, everyone. Coming in today for 
the first time into the stream. I hope you're enjoying so far. I know many of you are coming over from Dave's stream as well, so I hope you'll enjoy it. Despite the fact that we have different casting styles as well, uh, it's always, I know, kind of difficult to adapt to, to new people as well. I love Nova using all those features. Well, <laughs> you gotta do it, right? Pressure from heart. Unlikely to get any villagers down. He'll just push the villagers away a little bit until Jibotel manages to get enough units to defend himself. He's got right now only spearmen and archers though, so that's not going to suffice against the skirmishers and heart. You know, might not be able to get too much damage done over here, but eventually these skirmishers will get villagers, man. It's still one damage per shot. He's bringing the scout, he's bringing the spearmen as well, extra units to put pressure with. He's gonna be the first player to get to the castle H by a little bit. He's got a, at this point already. A very nice head start to the castle age compared to the red player. It's going to be 53 seconds or so. So what is the plan? He does have archer ranges coming up. And I was expecting to see cavalry archers at some point from the Huns over here. But he does... Uh, oh, he does have three archer ranges. The third one is coming up. This is good, guys. This is good for heart. Once again, especially because of the walls that Jibaton has gone for. If the red player had gone for the walls like this... Yeah, no problem, right? But this way, he can get pushed away from here. And the gold that he's been collecting from on the back is so far away that even if Hart has to break through the palaces to get there, let's say that the blue player breaks through over here, he should be able to come in and these villagers are too far away from the TC to get garrisoned anyway. Beautiful pressure from Hart. He does get another villager from Jivatong. And the stable gets denied for the time being or delayed. Rather. There we go, right hand side. A uh, little bit of pressure from Jotun, not really. I mean, he's got the units, but he's not really targeting anything, right? So Hart's gonna be fine, and he's got all three archer ranges. We're gonna see full cover archer production. Interestingly enough, he does go for the second TC, so this will prevent him from going 100% into CA, right? But not by too much. Eventually, he will get the numbers that he needs. And Jibutong, well, jibutong has got the Monastery up, he's got three stables, actually. But he is also going for a second TC, so none of these players is going to commit to full military production only. It's going to be also a little bit of economy. For the Monastery, it's very important for Jibutong to try and secure some of the relics. It'll be very important for Hart as well to try and get some of the relics himself, to try and prevent Jibutong from even getting, or from even having the chance of collecting three relics or more. Ideally, Hart wants to go and collect his own relics to the side of his base, but uh, if he collects the center one over here, that's ideal as well, so the Jibotan would only have two relics left. Which basically compensates for Lithuanians not having Blast Furnace anymore. We'll still be very strong in the Castle Age, of course, but then in the Imperial Age, two relics is not going to be the worst to fight against uh, Lithuanians. Big trees? Maybe no mods? Oh no, these are not big trees. Let me show you. Um... You take a look at the graphic mods over here. Take, take a look at these trees over here underneath the logo, right? With the disable mods, and they grow. These are medium trees. It's on purpose. I like the foresty look of the woods in Age of Empires, so I use middle trees, which are middle ground between small trees and big trees. Big trees for... for the, it just happens to be the case that the birch trees are actually massive. <laughs> in this map, we have a lot of those, but... Uh, usually it does look a little bit better with, with other tree types. I was talking earlier in my stream about the possibility of making a, a custom mod myself as well that would account for the different tree sizes, right? Not just be a percentage multiplier. I, I like medium trees. I will probably still reduce the birch trees a little bit though. We'll see. We'll see in 2023. We'll see tomorrow. <laughs> nice pressure. Our archers already pushed the villagers away from the gold. This is what we were expecting to see. They already pushed the villagers away from the wood. But Jibutong did get the extra TCs on the left-hand side. He's already 
securing this gold. He's securing some of the wood as well. And hard. Hard still doing a lot of damage though. Extra knights going down. How many units have these cover yards just taken down already? One only. It, it would seem like that should be a lot higher, right? It's probably because the one that died maybe dealt the kill blows against most of the units. Hearts going for the third TC right now. Interestingly enough, despite the fact that Jibotong went for the extra TCs earlier, he did rack up a lot of extra little TC time. He's the only player to have taken any villager losses throughout the game, so hard. While he is playing catch up in the sense that he's going for the third TC later compared to Jibotong, he's actually ahead in work account. So the bull player is looking absolutely fantastic. He should take the knights out. And he does. Another one goes down. And another one! Still a good amount of cover archers. Does he have a uh, thumb ring? He doesn't. He doesn't have a uh, ballistics either. He needs both. Well, the university is already on the way, so that's going to take care of one of those things. And he does have one archer range he's not making use of. Just doesn't have the economy to go for it, but thumb ring is going to be absolutely in instrumental as well. Yeah, all the ones that got kills died probably from the CA. Yeah. Interestingly enough, nobody is going for any stone at this point in time, so it's unlikely we'll see a castle come up anytime soon. Hard still roaming around with the cavalry archers, though. He's got the hill advantage over here, taking the knights down. Without too many issues. Ballistics is going to be here very soon. He does need to go for Thumbring as well, but Ballistics, at the very least, will make these cavalry archers not any worse against moving units, but they are still going to be only 50% accurate. Yeah, good defense for Jibotong, you could say. But Hart has already gotten a much better deal throughout the game. Even if he ends up getting cleaned up over here, right? The KD is about the same, and he's gotten a bunch of villagers. The Rio will go 2310. Thank you so much for the Prime Sub. It's very much appreciated. You guys know that I love the Prime Subs. They're free for you. They give me the Bezos box, which I will take all of them that you can give to me because of uh, the whole. Amazon the back hole from earlier this year. So, very much appreciated, uh, Real Lugo. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. I would imagine the sub is a positive indication. Still nothing coming? No, no, no. I I'm done. I'm done. Bamboo is finally on the way for hard, though. Yes, sir. Now it's going for a scary amount of carry archers on the left hand side. He's got a total of 20. Of those, we have 14 forwards, so he needs to keep on sending the units. And Jibutan? Jibutan's struggling. He struggled to keep up this game. Through and through. He's behind the military account, behind the village accounts, taking the moles loss 7 to 1. Hard with the German KD. And he keeps on going for more. So this is the thing. Hart kind of gave up on the idea of going for full CA. Early on when he added the extra TC, but it was going to be only a matter of time until he got a strong enough economy that would allow him to go for extra villages from the TCs and cover the archers at the same time. And right now he's gotten there. So from this point onwards, Hart becomes much, much deadlier. He's got uh, 35 cover archers currently, 5 queued up. He's producing from all three archer ranges. He's got Thumbring and Ballistics in addition to Balkin Arrow. Feather Archer, but he doesn't have a uh, Leather Archer armor yet. But so long as he is able to keep his distance, it's not going to make too much of a difference, right? It's all about the mobility and the accuracy. So there we go. The knights are not really holding on too well over here. With 15 cavalry archers, you can two-shot knights! Which is why I want to see more than 15. You need to have a little bit of a, of a buffer over here. Heart's gone down to 12 cavalry archers. But he's bringing more. He's gonna try and connect his armies. He's trying to breach through. On the right hand side, should be trying to breach through on the right hand side. It's not coming in yet though. Shots fire the Germans. Oh no, no, it's it, it's good for Germany. Same to Brazil. <laughs> yeah, Hart is in a in a much better spot, guys. One military unit for Jibotong, Hart's in 33. 
Will Byron's coming in as if Hard to Counter was not strong enough. He already has Heavy Plow, which Jibutan doesn't have. He's got Bosa, which Jibutan doesn't have. A higher work account, a higher military account, 34 to 1. And very soon it's gonna be off to the Imperial Age, so what does Jibutan do in a position like this? Yeah, I'll probably just roll over and... And wait until the Imperial Age comes over before calling the GG. Well, to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if Jibutan even called it before the Imperial Age got here. We'll see. Could he use hill forts? I mean, he would have needed a castle, right? Oh uh, no, Jibutong! Four villages down, five villages down, it's not going to be the end of it. Ah, uh, the red player is not seeing the end of it anytime soon. So many villages dead. 16 plus 7, that's going to be already 23 villages going down up in the north. Yeah, extra village is going down. Jibutan's kind of struggling to keep up with everything. Finds himself overwhelmed a little bit. And hard, you know. He's pulling all the strings. He's pulling all the threads. Causing Jibutan to fall apart at the seams. So... Yep, yeah, Imperial Age is on the way right now from Hard. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Jibutan just called the GG before the Imperial Age got here. Like, what does he do? The left hand side gets pushed away from the goal. On the right hand side, this goal is not secure. Without access to gold, he can't really do anything with Lithuanians, really. Yep. And and it's pretty much game. This one goes in favor of Heart, which, in my opinion, is 99% of the case. Going to be the case right now. Um, that's going to be one heal for Heart, right? Somebody used the match command earlier in the chat, and I think I saw a 200 to 300 heal difference between the players. I think it was like 200, right? Yeah, Heart is... You know, playing in the Silver League over here is not an indication of this player's skill level whatsoever. Uh, I, I I don't know why he was not in the Gold League or the Platinum League. Did, they, did he not sign up for the first season? Or why is Hart playing in the Silver League over here? But he's definitely punching above. Well, I, I guess you could say he's punching under his weight? In the Silver League? He wasn't active enough prior to the first season. Maybe that was was that an impediment for him to sign up or like was there a rule for a certain amount of games or something like that? But yeah, right now you gotta you gotta feel it for Jibutan, right? He's hurting. So Imperial Age gets here, Jibutan in the end did not call the GG before it got here, but now he does. So hard is up one nil against the Chinese player. Let's go through the achievements before jumping into game number two, hopefully. Once again, sorry if I have to mute myself from time to time. For me, Tari, we have a better than 7 to 4k ratio for Heart. Which is fantastic. Uh, for me, Tari High, it's going to be so much higher for Heart as well. Throughout the game, it was much higher for him. Only a small portion of the game saw extra military for Jibutan. That was before we got to the Castle Age and we got Cavalry Archer production commands. Much stronger economy for Heart as well. And this shouldn't be surprising anyone. But the extent by which he got a stronger economy is absolutely insane. 11,721 extra resources against Jibutong. In a game where Jibutong got 22,000 resources, that's 50%, over 50% extra resources from Heart. In this game, absolutely not. Absolutely naughty. Society, much better for Heart, no matter how you slice it, uh, produce. The most villagers, but took the fewest losses. Got the highest villager max count as well, and it was just pretty dominating over here from the bull player. Here's hoping that we are going to have at the very least one game going in favor of Jibutan, so th this is not a, a clean sweep, right? But we'll see. And here we go, guys! Game number two in the series, Heart. He's playing with Chinese, an amazing civilization on the right-hand side. Jibutan is going to be playing with Gurjaras instead on the left hand side. Another pretty strong civilization. We'll see what we get. Kind of weird that they release Rex one at a time. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that is about. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they are playing the games live right now, perhaps. And they are still playing the series or something. And they don't have the full pack ready, perhaps. I don't know. Because yesterday, for instance, they said that because Holon could not play today. Uh, he got uh, an admin loss, right? So... 
I'm not really sure. I don't. I, I would imagine that the game's already got played. Maybe it's an issue of... Is this live? No, no, no. These are recorded games. Maybe it's an issue of people speeding through the the wrecks and maybe kind of spoiling the results for the main channel or something like that. I mean, that wouldn't really be solved by sharing just one wreck at a time, right? You can still fast forward and stuff. The games were played a few days ago? Ah, actually, let me take a look. Three days ago. Yes. All right. You're correct. Oh, was sick, apparently? I think so. Yeah. Let's take a look at the right-hand side. Hard civilization, the Chinese, will begin with three extra villagers. At the expense of 200 food and 50 wood at the beginning of the game. Besides that, we'll see for this civilization, for the wool player, 10, 15, and 20% cheaper upgrades in the feudal castle and imperial ages. His CCs get five extra line of sight and five higher population support as well, and... In addition to that, we'll see for Heart Civilization that he gets for the team bonus 10% extra food on farms for free. Without having to go for the farm upgrades, right? Up in the north, Jibutan playing with the Grujaras instead will begin with two berry bushes underneath the TC. He will have the ability to garrison herdables inside the mill. And he gets 20, 30, and 40% extra bonus damage from mounted units against enemy units in the feudal castle in Imperial Ages. For the team bonus, the Gujaras will also produce Camel and Elephant type units, 25% faster, and I think that's going to be about it. Hopefully, I'm not forgetting anything. Hey, Staratas! Hi, hi. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. To you, too. Hey, Robo! Welcome as well. Taking a look at Hearts map generation, as we have Arabia, a very standard map for game number one. We'll see actually a pretty tragic map generation over here for Heart. At the very least for the main goal, it's going to be forward. Secondary goal up in the north towards the west, and the secondary goal over here towards towards the east and the south is going to be very far away from the TC, even if it's technically on the back. But if he does end up closing the walls up over here, right? Um, or at the very least going for the walls towards the TC, something like this, he should be able to secure this. And ideally, he will be able to secure the wool line over here as well. Now we'll see. This will be a little bit too hard to protect, so he could potentially just go for a few houses over here instead. And that, that should be good. Taking a look at Jibutong's map generation, on the other hand, the red player does have the main goal kind of backish, though. It's so much better compared to the blue players. The main stone is on the back as well. What is this map generation? Dude. Right hand side. We have a secondary goal, we have a secondary goal on the left-hand side as well. These are very far away. And then on the left-hand side, towards the south, we have a uh, secondary stone from the red player. So if he were to go for walls on the left-hand side to protect the goal over here... So yes, the goal is on the back, that's beautiful, but it's extremely open. He would have to go for something like this if he wanted to protect that, then even that's going to be so pricey and time-consuming. He will only have one wood line over here, which against the Chinese is not ideal, man. We could very well see the boot player. He can go for archers around here, just camp this area, push the villagers away. Alternatively, he could potentially even go for a tower. Uh, the boot player, right, and just push the villagers away. So there are a bunch of things that we could see from heart to put pressure. And if you take a look at the scout, he's already getting some scouting information over here. He knows about the wood line. We'll see if he roams around, if he, realize, if he realizes about this being the only wood line. For Jibut, and that makes a, a big difference, of course, realizing that it's the only one. Hey, hold on. What is this about these awards? Happy Leaves was voted the greatest delight for his great dashboard and how much it helps clowns and the wider community. Hey, let's go! Congrats, Happy Leaves. Dude, I, I was just praising you earlier in the stream today because your dashboard is so freaking good. It's magical. It, it seems like sorcery to me. And I don't know how you do it. You know, he implemented a new functionality. What was it? Yesterday, I think? Where the spectator dashboard now is going to detect which series of a tournament record the games belong to when somebody's casting. Nice attempt over here, Jibutong cannot get the quick balls up. 
So we are casting Rex right now, and if you go to the spectator dashboard and on the streamers tab, you will see that we are casting from T90 Titans League, the Silver League. Gibbeton versus Heart. I have no idea how he does it. Not to say that I am a particularly expert programmer or anything, but <laughs> I, I know I know a little bit. I know the basics. And and his will be on that. Yes, that's that's great. That's absolutely fantastic. I think he's gone though. Again. Nice snipe. Scout goes down. That's gonna keep on putting pressure. With the archers coming out, Jumatan should be able to push the Minotaurs away, but it's going to take some time before he's actually able to go forward and get any damage done. The Mamba Awards, yes. What does Mamba stand for? No, we're just jumping on the victory wagon? I don't think so. Yeah. Here we are, the archers are coming out, and he should be able to take care of the Minotaurs. If Hart plays his cards right, he might be able to get one villager. Now, let's see. He's gonna try, he's gonna try! That was that close call! The walls are going to stay up for the time being, and Hart... Yeah, Hart won't be able to get any damage over here. Jibutan. Only was impacted in terms of worker efficiency in the last minute by a little bit, not by too much. Uh, you take a look at the villagers over here, and he had to repair him for a little bit, right? So the efficiency for some of these villagers has not been the best, but... It's not going to be too significant in any case. Let's take a look at gather economy time so far. Oh wow, that's actually a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. Hard? Well, it's just the extra villagers. It's just the extra villagers he's been able to get ahead by about 27 minutes or so. Gather economy time, and... You know, the good thing about Hearts push over here, even if he's unable to get any damage done in, se in the sense of units down, right? Is that he bought himself a lot of time, and he was able to take advantage of the extra villagers? Yeah, Loom is coming up only now for Jibutong. Hart was able to take advantage of the extra villagers to get ahead in economy up until this point. It probably wouldn't have been the case if he had just played passive instead. Because Jibutong was going to start putting some pressure, right? So Hart might not have been able to get a villager down, but he was able to sustain these Minotaurs for a very long time. He was able to keep his economy going for a very long time. Pretty much uncontested. And now he's in a better spot because of it. This gather economy time is going up from 27 minutes or so to over half an hour now. Compared to Jibotong. And it's just going to keep on getting higher and higher, of course, by the minute. I have seen many games with Gujaras going archers. Uh, most of the scouts usually... Oh, they go for... For archers or... For scouts. You can go for both. You can go for either, rather, right? But, uh, this was calculated from Jibutong. He was going... He was going to go for archers and spearmen, most likely. I guess he was kind of expecting hard to make a play for scouts. So he wanted to play for... He didn't want to play for scouts himself. But, yeah. Hearts push. Doesn't seem once again like it's going to achieve much of anything. We have the same army for both these guys. Removing the villager from here is going to reveal four skirmishes and three archers for both these players. Higher HP for Hearts army though. And uh, yeah, once again, it's not really about doing too much damage for Heart. Although, of course, if he does manage to get a villager down or so, that's ideal. But it's mostly about keeping Jibutong hand back home and taking advantage of his stronger economy so we'll see both these players go up to the castle age very soon Jibutong also gets a pretty decent economy because of the hurdables it's got eight garrison over here so that's going to amount to about 350 or so food generated up until this point i would say i remember uh back in the day when gujaras were first introduced that it would take about half an hour for a hurdable to produce its own food worth of income, right? So if you had uh, four sheep over here, let's say you had eight sheep over here, after half an hour of being garrisoned, they would produce 800 food. But then they nerfed the uh, Gujaras a little bit so that it wouldn't scale linearly, right? So you have more units over here garrisoned, they're not going to produce quite as many resources. 
compared to before, but it, this is still going to be pretty decent. I think it's going to be still more than 600 after, after half an hour, so I would imagine up until this point it was maybe 350 or so. It is worse now. Yes, it got nerfed. If I am not mistaken, compared to before, garrison more than 6 herdables is not going to yield as many resources anymore. Is that right? I believe so, right? Something like that. Yeah, so should still be a, a pretty decent amount of food though. Allows it to click out to the castle each earlier than hard, for instance. Maybe not something that we we would be expecting here. And we'll play our whale. It's gonna be in the castle each a little bit later. We have a 46 second lead or so. For Jibaton to the castle each and what is the strategy over here? He's got a stable. He's got the, the one stable only though, so it's going to be Shri Vanish Riders? Or is it going to be... Well, you know, Hearts got for the most part range units, so Shri Vanish Riders would certainly make sense, but he can also go for camels if he's expecting Ch the Chinese to make a transition to cavalry in the castle. Let's take a look to see what Hearts going for. He's got one stable. Just the one. No extra archer ranges, no extra stables. Yep. And once again, thank you for the for the follows, appreciate it. Yes, but the villagers would eat that doing other things, so it should be accounted for too. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Those are resources that you basically get that you would otherwise have gotten earlier by actually butchering the the herbivores. But uh, if you're able to stabilize, you spend a, a little bit of extra resources earlier, going for the farms, depleting the berries earlier, right? I would say it was still pretty good for Jibatong. Especially with the two berry bushes at the very beginning too. It's not going to be quite as good, but... 250 resources also amount to something. I think even the sheep in the castle age should be good. Like, Tata bonus. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen a lot of people do that actually. And by a lot, I mean no one, but... Maybe, right? Yeah, it seems to me like it's not quite as relevant anymore. And it could be a very nice boost of food, for sure. Takes micro. I mean, a little bit. If you have garrison all eight, bring them over and just send the villagers over there. It wouldn't be quite as efficient as if you were tasking one uh, sheep at a time, but it would still be free food. You would just have to remember about the villagers afterwards so that you can task them uh, back to the farms or whatever. So it's going to be Knights for Heart. And Jibutong, Jibutong is going for Elite Skirmishers. Not a lot of camels though. He's not really producing too much. What is the plan over here? Jibutong's got the second TC. And Heart, he's got a second TC. And he got the second TC earlier actually compared to Jibutong. So the red player over here is playing catch up. And it's so interesting to see. Once again, we're going to see Heart slowly but surely start to pull a significant lead against you to population already is 12 higher for hard then if you take a look at military in the economy count hard is looking better compared to the play to the red player already no matter how you slice it okay efficiency has been pretty good for hard throughout the game it's actually been higher compared to jibutong it's got an hour of extra gather economy time oh boy it's got pressure coming up He's doing a really good job of trying to keep most of the units forward as well. He's got over here uh, 20 units, right? Out of 23 total military units. That is not bad. That is not bad. Many of the units are going forward actually right now from the ones that he produced. Just these two archers are left behind. And Jibutong. Jibutong is able to defend himself for the time being. Hard. Wouldn't be a surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if Hard went uh, for a forward villager and he went for a siege workshop. So he does have a villager over here, but that's going to be for the 30 C. If he went for a Siege Workshop 4, there are a few places he could go for it. For instance, on the right hand side, the blue player would be able to put pressure against the gold over here. Well, not that Jibutan is taken from it right now, of course, but he will be able to keep it away. Uh, he will be able to take pressure, to put pressure against the TC, push the farmers away. Alternatively, if he went for the Siege Workshop on the right hand side, over here, maybe even on the hill. That'd be fantastic to put pressure against the gold, against the stone over there. And ideally, if 
he got enough resources to go for a castle. He could even use this as a placeholder of sorts and then eventually go for a castle over here on the hill. Potential big engagement cooking up. It'll be so far four on the left. Yeah, it would be. It would be. It would certainly yield some higher risk compared to going for the castle on the right hand side. There we go. The cannons are coming in. Trying to get the Tyrant going against the skirmishers. Not gonna happen. The cannons from Jiwatong are providing some good protection. And Hart. Hart's going to get pushed back over here. He bails. He's respecting Jibaton's defenses. For upgrades, though, both players are kind of lacking uh, a bunch of upgrades over here. We don't have Chain Barter Arrow for anyone. We don't have Forging for anyone. For the Archers, both these players already have Bakken Arrow. jibatong has got for the Skirmishers also. Leather Archer Armor. Hart doesn't even have plus one, plus one on the Archers yet. And no Blood 6 for the Skirmishers. No Blood 6 for the Archers either. I don't think anyone's got a university yet. Well, the red player doesn't have one. And... The blue player. Yeah, he doesn't have one either, so they need to go for it. Especially blue. Especially hard. The archers over here, they are a unit to put pressure with. He wants to get ballistic, so he can actually shred some HP out these camels. Much better map. Uh, much better composition for hard over here, I would agree. Yes. He's got Bloodlands coming in. We already have Bloodlands for Jiwatong. He's going for Chain Bar the Armor. Jiwatong, that is finally, but Hart's already gone for it as well. That's looking a lot better. Forging on the way right now from Hart as well. He's got to be careful over here. Patient. 14 camels. How many do we have for the red player? We have 17 camels over there. A few extra knights over here from Hart, though. Could tip the scale. Check. Shayun is coming over from Hart. He's waiting. He already got the upgrade still. What is he waiting for? He's gonna go for the four castle. He's going to place it in front of the TC or closer to the gold. In between both these, this castle is still going to have enough range to target the TC town, so it's fine. It basically provides protection for this go for this one so that Hart will be able to collect from it. Makes it impossible for Jibutan to take it. And here it goes, guys! The big engagement we were looking forward to! As you thought, bring the camels over here to meet you, and the skirmishers are struggling to take the archers out, and you know what? Hart seems like he's going to very handily win this engagement, and that's so many units from the red player going down. The absolute carnage. Coming in by the hand of Hart is going to clean the units out from Jibatong, and while we might not have too many units left for Hart, it's still going to be enough for him to get the castle up. It's still going to be enough for him to take the camels down over here from Jibatong. Who is trickling the units one at a time, and you know what? It's fantastic for Hart. He's got to keep on the pressure going as well, so he does send the extra units he's producing forward. Even Cavalry Archers uh, coming in for Hart right now. There we go. The castle comes up! And it's starting to kind of shape up like a GG over here, yes. I see one of the Gs uh, already properly formed. And the second GG is starting to bend right now. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's not spelling good news for Jibaton. Really just on the way now for Heart as well. What's the difference between double gold composition versus one goal, one trash? Yes! Absolutely agree. Pretty similar to what we see even um, in the Fuel Age, right? When you see scouts and skirmishers versus scouts and archers. My opinion, the best composition in the Fuel Age. What is the upgrade in the top right corner? Uh, you mean this one? That's ball lines. That gives your cavalry 20 extra HP. It's very good, and it's going to be even better for low HP units such as the scouts, for instance. Once you get to units with 100 HP and higher, that's not going to be quite as good in terms of percentage. But it's still pretty instrumental, of course, if you are fighting with... What I'm trying to say is that an elephant's not going to be quite as affected by bloodlines compared to a scout, right? But 
Yeah, the stage, you're already expecting both these players to get it. Beautiful. Yeah, good defense over here. Hard might have ended up losing the majority of the camels over there, but it doesn't matter. He still has a better KD over here. Extra archer range is coming up. Hard's gonna be in the Imperial Age very soon. And this kind of brings me some deja vu feelings from game number one. Is Yubaton going to call the GG once Hard gets to the Imperial Age? The score lead is quite substantial already for the Bull player, yet this is a decider series. And if Jotun were to call a GG after Hart got to the Imperial Age, well, that's going to leave Hart, uh, you know, only one game away from making it into the Gold League with three games left. So I would expect Jotun to keep on trying a little bit harder, but... Oh, the Quick Walls do not connect from Hart! The Camel's coming. There is so much catching up to do for the Red player, though. He is behind by 31 workers. And taking 31 villages over here from Heart, as unlikely as it seems, would only be bringing Jibaton back up to parity in work account. That would not really offset for the hours of extra gather economy time that Heart has already gotten from having had the extra villages for such a long time. So the Bull player being in the Imperial Age, having collected a lot of extra resources, getting much stronger upgrades, right? Double Lester's with Bracer right now as well. Should still pretty much leave Hart in the driver's seat for the remaining of the game, but yeah, Jibutan wants to keep on trying, and I, I do understand it from him. Once again, if he calls a GG over here, that's that's not too good. Beautiful quick walls coming in from Hart, protecting the trebuchet over there, building a little bit of a bastion out of the castle. Yeah, yeah. The camel's coming over. Should be able to take the elephants down. Let's see. Jibaton's still getting away with a little bit of raiding though, with the camels remaining over here. Around hard space, but shouldn't be the case for much longer. The Arbalancers are eventually going to clean the units up. What's the, no the number below worker efficiency? That's working time in the last minute. So for instance, and by the way, beautiful castle kill over here. So for instance, you can see that right now Jibutong, he's got a higher worker efficiency compared to Hart, which means that a higher percentage of his total villagers are collecting resources, but the worker time in the last minute is significantly higher for Hart because while his efficiency is not quite as good, he's got so many extra villagers that he more than offsets for the somewhat lower efficiency over here. So he's still getting more resources in by the minute compared to Jibaton. Yes. One of the multiple absolutely fantastic features from Capture Age as well. Certainly something to try and make sense of and take advantage of when trying to analyze your own, game, your own games. Available also as a, as a free feature. There we go. Our ballistas are getting clean now. The Shri Vansters are, are still buying Jibutan a little bit of time, but this is just a drop in the pocket. But the Arbalist is putting pressure, the Trish is putting pressure. Jibutan is about to lose the last fortification he's got left. All three TCs will be at the mercy of the Trishes afterwards, and to be honest, the TCs alone will not be enough to defend even just against the Arbalistas alone. More Shivanj Riders. A little bit of a choke point over here for Hard though. Maybe not the best, but should still be able to clean this up, right? Let's check. It is 2023 here. Hey, Howardcraft! Happy New Year! Yeah, where are you right now? I would imagine people um, from Turkey would probably be already in the new year. When we were just starting the stream at 16 GMT, I think uh, people from Taiwan were already in the new year. And then one hour from now, or actually 49 minutes from now, people in Finland are going to be in 2023 as well. You're going to be in the future.
50 minutes for me. I have my face on and a reasonable set of clothes. I have my face on. Okay. So time for me to go out. Alright, bye, I'll see you next time and, and have a good one, alright? For everybody still sticking around the stream. We'll see if the series is long enough to get to New Year for some of you or not. Jibutan calls it GG though. And this was this was a long time coming. Jibutan? It's going to take the second loss over here in a row. Let's go through the achievements really quickly. Put one's face on. I, I would imagine that was going to be about makeup, yes. <laughs> that is a very funny expression though. And yeah, taking a look at the achievements before jumping into game number three right away, we're gonna see that Hart got a much better KD, about three to two, a little higher than that even. For economy, a much stronger economy. 13,000, close to 13,000 extra resources. Society, looking much better for Heart as well. Producing a lot of extra villagers, keeping most of these alive compared to Jibutan as well. Much, much better, and uh, overall it was pretty dominating from the Peruvian player. Let's go back. And here we go! Where are you from, Nova? I am from Argentina. The land of Dulce de Leche. The land of Alfajores. And the land of Messi Papa. Let me take a look. Alright. Uh, where, where were you? Hovercraft, you said, right? <laughs> I'm uploading my conscience to a one is SSD, nice. Alright guys, let's take a look at game number three right away. Starting with hard playing with Burgundians is gonna be down the south with the Burgundians and the blue collar and Jibutan playing with the Poles is gonna be up in the north playing in the, in the red collar. So this is a very interesting map and not one that I would expect Jibutan to have a particularly clear lead on. So I don't know, but to be honest though, is there a map you would expect Jibutan to have a lead on at all? I don't know, it seems to me like it's going to be rough no matter what. For the civilization, the blue player gets access to eco upgrades one each earlier for a 50% for a 40% foot discount. Sorry, it got nerfed. Uh, we're gonna see for Burgundians also access to the cavalry upgrade and the castle age. A 50% discount on stable upgrades and 25% higher attack on gunpowder units. Team bonus will allow them to generate food in addition to gold from the relics. Up in the north, Jibutan with the pulse instead will get 5, 10, 15, and 20 HP regeneration on villagers per minute. The Dark Field Castle and Imperial Ages, respectively, and we'll see for this civilization also. 0.33 units of gold per each unit of stone the villagers generate, or actually the villagers mine, sorry. And access to fall work. Well, for the team bonus, uh, cavalry or the scout type units from Poles will have one bonus damage against archer type units. It's an absolute fantastic bonus, actually, and it can be really good when going for Wing Hazard in the later stages of the game. I favor the poles. Yes. I would favor the poles over here as well. If this is going to play somewhat similar to standard arena, I, I would favor the poles. Interesting, Jibutan's going for the palace. It was on the right hand side already. Alright. So that's why you had the 7 1 for the reference before? <laughs> you got it. Congrats on the, the World Cup. Thank you. It was a tough game, but we played it right. Uh, you know. I have very good synergy with Messi and the rest of the guys, and if it weren't because of, of that, we wouldn't have taken the the win for sure. Let's take a look at the map generation. That's a joke, by the way, making an illusion of the fact that I actually did not win anything, but... <laughs> Let's take a look at the map. We have, on the right-hand side, the main goal for heart. On the left-hand side, the main stone. Secondary resources beyond the walls, as you expect to see them, are going to be forward for Hart, and then he's got the secondary goal on the right-hand side. There we go. Could potentially go for some walls. Well, ideally, if he wanted to protect the goal, right, he would have to go either for something like this and this, uh, or maybe even just try to connect to the gold like this. That wouldn't be ideal, for sure. We'll see what he goes for in the end, but it's certainly... Seems to be the case that Hart will try to wall himself up, but the release on the left-hand side, he's already gone for the walls. None of these resources inside, by the way, the gold over there or the stone, is going to be close enough to the walls to get spotted by a scout scouting from the outside. So unless Jibutan brought the scout over, uh, 
around the back, right? I don't think it's going to realize about any of that. Taking a look up north, we're going to see the Jibotong instead. He's got the main goal on the back. So that, that's actually very good. And it's going to make it impossible for her to spot it. And then the main stone is going to be for Now this one is actually a little bit closer to the wall. So if we saw the blue player go with the scout around here like this. In the castle, actually, I think in the fuel age, he might get enough uh, line of sight over here. But in the castle age, for sure, he could spot the stone over here. So if we were to see Hart go for a for castle, for instance, uh, and, and then he had vision of this stone over here, he could choose to go for one castle over here, which would allow him to... Oh my lord, that is not a castle. To go for a castle over here. And okay, 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 come on. The, the annotations are freaking out right now. Oh my lord. And potentially deny both these, right? This and this. Yeah, but it seems unlikely, though. He's playing Burgundia, so I don't expect to see that. In any case, I would expect to see Jibaton try to put some pressure himself instead. So, once again, we find ourselves in a situation where we see one player with the arguably stronger civilization, but against a stronger player, right? So, what is going to come out on top over here? The civilization of the player, in my opinion, the player is going to be more influential, so I I'm going to put my money on hard. But we'll see. Pulse still a force to be reckoned with in Jibutan. Jibutan's going out to the village though. On 20 populations in the villagers four is gonna try and trush and hard. Hard's not on his way up. He was playing stand a fast castle over here. Interesting. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year to you too, Devil Hunter. Appreciate it. Thanks for streaming. Your moderation style is great. Including the extra visuals. Thank you. It's very much appreciated. Patria drop us a legit strat too. Don't worry. Ah. Should have seen that coming. I'm curious to see how a great player defends. Yes! We'll see. He already has vision of the tower coming up because of it being right next to the wall. And being right next to the gate as well. He's not really reacting over here too much. He's got the one house coming up on the right hand side. So I would expect him to go for some walls just towards the TC, right? And then on the left hand side, try to wall like this. It's going to buy him an up protection. Yes, it's going on the right-hand side towards the TC. Left-hand side shouldn't be too difficult for him to get up. I'm slightly surprised at the fact that he's going for palaces as opposed to trying to go for stone walls. And maybe just try to collect some of the stone over here. I think he'll probably just try to minimize the eco impact that this push is having on him so that he'll still be able to fast castle. And that is the thing. If Jibutong breaks through over here, comes in and only manages to get the extra towers up by the time Hart has already managed to click out to the castle it's, then it's kind of moot and the push is not going to achieve too much after all Hart's got resources on the back with the gold this gold over here as well and the stone will be kind of an issue I guess for Hart he will have to to go for a defensive tower himself and let's take a look at this he's trading HP he's trading HP for the walls and this is absolutely fantastic take a look at that the unit control from Hart, how good is that? He baits, he draws fire from the tower with a single villager and he's able to finish the, the house because of it. My lord, come on, Hart, no freaking way. Let's get a defensive tower coming up, cutting the trash short from Jibotong and he's got almost enough resources to still go up to the castle. Which of course, it's not going to be the plan to go up right away. He doesn't have the resource to go for everything, but he does have a market on the way. And he does have a stable on the way, so we will see him go up to the castle age, but it's not going to be a straight fast castle because of the tower coming out. Wow. The house play over here was absolutely game-changing. If he weren't because of it, I don't know. I would be in a, in a rougher position, right? Jibutan will probably be already putting pressure up over here, a second tower coming up. Yeah. Our show is Elo for sure. Yep. Another tower coming up for Jiwatan. Well, yeah, this will certainly allow him to take the tower down from hard, but this is so late already. The blue player should be on his way to the castle age, and he is. So Jiwatan, having to spend this much time in the fuel age just to get one tower down from hard. Just to, to have the chance of coming in once again, it's so little though. He's getting such little in return for all that he's put into this push. 
Yeah, hard stun a really good job. One villager goes down over there though, or I think. There is some blood. This appears now. Yeah, yeah, the first villager. That's gonna be first blood, actually. But Hart's still on his way to the castle, so he's gonna be just fine. Guys, what were you expecting to see in this game? When you saw the civilizations and the players before? I was expecting Hart to still be a little bit stronger, because I thought the skill difference was going to offset for the civilization, but... Uh, it's also going to be partly... You know, the lead for Hart over here is also going to be partly because of the strategy of choice for Jibaton, right? Trying to go for the trash over here. Now, it, there was no way to tell what the game would have been like if Jibaton tried to play for a Santa Fast Castle into... into economy, right? And, and trying to take this one to the late game. Of course, in hindsight, it's going to look better than this because this is not really working out right now, but almost anything is going to look better than this. I was hoping to see this. Taking notes? That's the way to go. LNTC has pulls is bad. Yeah. There's also the relics on the sides. Yes, so even if Jibuton was able to secure the relics over here, which I don't think is necessarily going to be the case, being so far away from the castle, right? Uh, we still have relics outside, and that's going to be one, two on hard side of the map, and then these two are technically kind of contested, right? Because I don't think they are closer to Jibuton's base. And even if they were, the, the walls... Nah, never mind. I was going to say something dumb. Nice little child for Jibutong. Right now, Hart's going for the Siege Workshop. And he should be able to defend himself just fine. Two Magnus or so. We'll be taking the towers down easily and could potentially flatten the, the archers. Yeah, especially because of the double tower over here, I would imagine knights are probably a little bit riskier for Hart, so he chooses the, the Siege route instead. Once again, Hart trying to bait. Fire from the tower with a weak villager, but that's the second villager going down. From the rule player. And while Jimotong should be on his way to the castle age very soon. He's gonna have to defend himself against Siege over here and with the second. Manel, that's going to be much better. But now we have two towers from Jimotong, that is so much better. It's going to require about three manels, I would say. Maybe two would be enough. He would need to keep villagers repairing them at all times though. Two against a single tower is enough, two against two towers over here seems like it's still going to be too too tight. And there's a third tower coming out for Jibotong, alright. Pyrelix in uh, the middle, need to click Castle H on priority. We'll see Jibotong going out to the Castle H now, yes. Ideally he will want to take the relics, even if he does not get access to the outside relics for whatever reason. Collecting the five from the center is still going to leave you on the most relics in the game no matter what. Yeah, the manos are not working out over here. We have too many towers. I tried both. Rams plus knights. It's so, so much easier. He's struggling right now. Well, the thing is, with the adjacent towers like this... Have you tried against adjacent towers like this? This is the, the reason why I think knights will be a little bit trickier over here. Because it's going to really protect them. Against two towers together. Yeah, that's the manganel. He's got two left. Let's see. Here we go. Oh man, the mountain is just getting shredded over there. He needs two villages, and even then, it's so tight. Oh boy. Three villages, four freaking villages. And the blue player. Required to keep the mountain lap over here against both towers. Yeah, and good unit control for heart for the most part. Sticking the scout down with the TC, right? Second one on the towers down, yes. Requires a lot of effort. And Jibuton's gonna be in the castle each time in a moment, but then now the Magnet goes down and the tower stays up! Are you kidding me? Jibuton, for as little as he got out of this push earlier in the game, now he's actually getting a lot more out of this. He's managed to get ahead in village account compared to Heart. He's managed to stay significantly ahead in worker efficiency compared to Heart in the last minute. And if we take a look at the worker efficiency actually throughout the game, it's you know, it's been very similar, but Jibaton has managed to collect about 25 minutes of extra. He's managed to get 25 minutes of extra gather economy time, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Not too bad. And we could get guard towers for Jibatong, indeed. Uh, I don't know if he's got a university, though. No, no. He should be going for it, though. It's a no-brainer at this point. Second DC is on the way. And he can just move as well? Yes. And from this point onwards, so long as Jibatong plays his cards right, he should be in a better position. The poles, in my opinion, are going to be the better civilization over here against Burgundians. And it's not just a civilization that's better, but Jibatong has... By his own right, got himself to a better position compared to Hart. So if Jibaton were to win the game over here, I'd, I'm not going to attribute that to the civilization. I think he's just played this one uh, a lot better than I was actually giving him credit for. Especially early on when he was struggling so much to, bre uh, to reach through the walls over here. I thought it was certainly favoring Hart, but Jibaton has... Well, he's, he's shut my mouth. <laughs> He's proven me wrong, and, and he's certainly looking still very much alive over here. Not only alive, but also he's looking very strong. More mana is coming out for Heart. He's been struggling so far, though. He's been unable to get a single tower down. He's going to try to go after the left-hand side and prevent the walls from coming up. Well, won't be... Oh, the map shot! How many... Is that a fourth villager over there? Three villages went down to the mana. That that's fantastic. Actually, seven units total to the mana mills, which is yeah. Okay, there we go. Three eco units. So we know it's three villages. Oh boy. Yeah, he needed to prevent the tower from coming up because we saw adjacent towers come up on the left hand side as well. That was going to be so much rougher for Hart. Still, right here more so. Friendly fire. Up in the north, the thirty C is coming up for Jibutong and. He's going to take your advice. He's just going for full boom. And how could you really blame him, right? He's got a civilization that really lends itself to it. Hard. Keeps on struggling. Because the tower's over here. Let's take a look at the mana HP. He's trying he's trying with four this time around. Alright, two were not enough. With four, he's able to get one down. Still we have two. Towers over there and a bunch of light cavalry coming out. We'll take one of the monks down. Beautiful attack round from Hart. And he still has three mana nails left to work with. He might be able to clean this up. It's actually going to be four mana nails. Not three. He might be able to take this one down. Just gotta make sure he does not lose the mana And the unit control is starting to get a little bit too hectic over here. Hart's gotta keep up with too many things. Too many villagers over here, trying to repair too many magnets, but in the end he will end up taking another tower down over there. There we go, and this, that's going to leave the red player and only one tower left on the right-hand side. So it took some time, and you gotta wonder if Hart had gone for extra manas earlier. If he would have been able to clean this up already. But the stage, and another nice mango shot over there, and another one! And Hart! He's getting a much higher military count compared to Jibaton because of the nice mana shots. He finally frees himself up from the towers. There's a castle coming up on the right-hand side as well. He's going to try to breach through. Are we going to see uh, Kusier? But this has been so much pressure for Jibaton for such a long time. You gotta wonder if Hart's going to be able to get any damage done from this point onwards. Given the fact that Jibaton's already gotten an hour of extra gallery economy time. He's gotten a more efficient economy throughout the game. He's been the one putting the most pressure, right? Yeah, and only now the second DC is coming up for Hart, but... jibatan has been on 3 for a while. Of course, he's got a lot of extra LTC time compared to Hart. He's not really been producing from all 3 TCs at all times, but he still managed to get a 10 villager lead. Against the blue player. Raid coming up. With the remaining light cavalry. Well, Hart doesn't really have too many military units. Even the spearmen don't have the pikemen upgrade. They don't have the scale mail armor upgrade. So the knights over here, light cavalry, might actually get a lot more damage done. Around Hart space, and uh, I think he would probably be expecting to receive on his end. But yeah, the spearmen are going down, not particularly close. Jibutan doesn't have chain bar than armor, but Hart does not have a lot of villages garrisoned inside the TC, so the knights over here, they are going to hold on just fine. That's a lot of villages going down though, Hart. Losing 10 villages so far, and it's not going to be the end of it. Another village goes down, and it's open! By the Siege Workshop, good realization from Hart to Quick Wall over here, but still... 
This nice should be able to breach through. Maybe try to target the house for the siege workshop. He's just going underneath the PC, guys, and hard. Hart is not even guarding some of the PC properly over here. He's just taking a lot of losses underneath it. And that is not what you want to see from the blue player to keep on playing over here. So, guys, Hart calls a GG for game number three. And Jibutan gets the first point. Those of you who said you were expected to see a 2-1 after this game, you were onto something, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, this was not up to Pulse. In my opinion, this was just Jibutan playing really well. And not only playing really well, also coming back. Because after taking so long to breach through over here, he lost at the back foot. He was able to bring himself back into this game by going full pressure. And in the end, he was able to take this one. But absolutely fantastic performance for Jibutan. Let's go through the achievements. And we'll see for military a better KD for Jibutong. Better than 5 to uh, 3. For economy, we see a stronger economy for Jibutong as well. By a lot. Collecting about 2200 extra resources. And for society, a higher villager max count for Jibutong by a lot. It's going to be about it though. Yes, sir. Let's go back, cross the civilizations on the map, and jump into game number four. Or rather, I guess we'll see if Jibutong is able to clutch it up or not. What is Jibutong using for cross? Saracens? Nothing seems right. Yeah, Saracens. He's got it. And Heart's going to have Japanese. Now, I'm liking Japanese overall better over here. At the very least, if you can secure... Or at the very least, one pawn is good. If you can get more than one, two or more, that'd be great. But uh, yeah, the faster work efficiency is going to give Heart such a boost. And economy. Meanwhile, Jibutan with the Saracens instead is going to have different tools to work with. We're going to talk about it in a moment. Give me a second to have some tea. Oh boy. Ah, it sucks so much to be sick for New Year. A relative of mine invited me to spend uh, the New Year with them, but I feel like I shouldn't go though. I'm like, I, I don't feel bad, but I'm still coughing and have a runny nose and it's it, it's kind of uncomfortable to leave your house when you're like this and at the same time it kind of feels a little bit responsible mm, if i wore a mask maybe and stayed away from everybody <laughs> that is not much of a celebration right but i don't want to to spread it to anybody else i'm pretty sure it's just a cold mm. But yeah, I remember, I, I, I used to get vexed about people making parties during the, the pandemic. And I would be kind of like that, right, if I went to spend New Year's with, with a group of people while being sick. Alright, let's take a look at the civilizations. Hard playing with the Japanese is going to get 5, 10, 15 and 20% faster working fishing ships in the Dark Field Castle and Imperial Ages. With twice the HP and plus 2 Pierce Armor, those are fantastic fishing ships as well. You can even use them to tank damage from enemy units and then on top of that we also see for Japanese a 50% discount on drop off buildings and 33% faster attacking infantry to start in the fuel age for the team bonus Japanese will get 50% extra line of sight on galley line ships so galleys war galleys galleon will get extra line of sight and it can be quite handy especially if you go for a dock let's say over here on the left hand side where hearts closest to if you went for a dock over here, let's say, and then that is not a dock. If you went for a dock over here, and then he sent the one galley over here, right? He would get enough vision to prevent any docks coming out from the red player. Interestingly enough, he's going to go for it right next to the closest distance from the TC. All right. Let's hope for a reverse. Let's hope for a great series. Well, let's hope for a great series. I would very much like to see a full series over here with five games. I don't know if I'm necessarily rooting for any of these players. I know that Jibutan winning would be a fantastic upset. But I'm not going to go as far as to root for anybody. And if we can get all five games, that would be ideal. Which is why the Poles can pull off a push like this and boom at the same time. Yeah, took some time for Jibotan to get to the castle H and whatnot, but the push prevented Hart from getting with the boom, getting going with the boom himself, even though he got to the castle H much earlier. Uh, are we waiting for a stream? Is it the reason as well? Are we waiting for a stream? Uh, what do you mean? 
Well, that's the Sears play three days ago. So then Johansson. In the game five, for New Year's sake. That'd be ideal, yeah. Is that a capture H feature? That is not a capture H feature, no, that is just for my stream. We took the ball hard civilization, let's take a look at Jibotan civilization. The Saracens will provide to the red player 10 extra HP on camels. He's going to get cheaper Marcus, a trade resources for cheaper as well. And then on top of that, we'll see for Saracens. Uh, also, what is it for the Saracens? They get, come on, uh, there we go. Twice the HP on transport ships that can garrison or can transport five extra units by default. And he gets 25% faster attacking guideline units. So, while we saw the Japanese get extra line of sight with galleys, which would be good, with the galleys not only would he be able to prevent, sorry, not only would he be able to spot any sneaky dogs coming in, he would be able to prevent them from coming up. Jibutan is going to have a similar ability with his own galleys. They will not have quite as much, uh, as much line of sight, but they will be attacking faster. Unfortunately for the red player though, most often than not, we have seen the fire line navy be significantly more relevant on, on Cross in the past. So we'll see how it goes. See ya, Grantinova, Nova people. Alright, guys, I'll see you. Enjoy New Year, have a good one. The village is coming up early for both these players. Cross seems like the most favorable map for fires over galleys, though. Yes, it is. It is. Fires have been historically much more relevant on this map compared to standard galleys. First off, the bodies of water, they are not too big, so there is not a lot of space to roam around with galleys and wait for you to get a good number of units. If you were playing on something like, uh, um, what is it, Blosh Ness, right, where you have a massive, massive lake at the center, then yeah, you can take advantage of the galleys, it's going to... You're going to have plenty of time to get the units up, but the fire galleys over here are going to be more relevant, in my opinion. I think one galley still for hard would be good. Will be pretty serviceable, just to deny the potential for enemy dogs coming up. But Jibutan, Jibutan's probably not going to be able to bank on his faster attacking bonus to get much of anything done, I think. Let's pronounce lock. Thank you. Hong is not playing today. He got an admin loss. He couldn't play. Yeah, the transfer ship bonus is not particularly useful over here. <laughs> kind of makes me wonder though, would the Saracens actually be decent for something like Houseboat? We have seen over there for the majority of the games, like um, Japanese, we have seen Malay a lot. We have seen a lot of Malay. Some Italians. You gotta wonder if the Saracens will be good. It's kind of a similar situation in the sense that you don't have too much space in time to mass a good amount of galleys. So I guess that's probably why we don't see them so often. Strength Breach 2, we have Minotaurs. And we have Malicious for Jibotan, he's in the Fuelage, but he's not going for the Minotaurs upgrade, he's going just for Archers instead. On the left-hand side, Hart is going for his own archer range. Both these players already have some uh, some gold miners, so we're gonna see full archer play from both. And nobody's going for any sneaky dogs. Nobody's going for much of anything. Interestingly enough, the map generation for both these players—they are or actually the location for both these players, the position in which they have spawned in the map—should allow them to wall to the edges of the map and protect the full pond because they are very close to the corner. Seems to me like it might be a little bit easier for Jibutan because of the wool line, the way that the wool lines have generated, but... So far, nobody's really been going for it yet. As a matter of fact, Jibutan's going for the walls towards uh, the pond, even. Let's go for a game 5. Double archer range over here for Jibutan, yes. Uh, Heart, on the other hand, is sticking to 1 only, right? Yeah, production's gonna be much stronger for Jibutan. Legends coming in for the red player earlier as well. This is really good. This is really good. Does he have a market? He does not have a market yet. Okay. But this is absolutely fantastic for Jibutan. He's got a higher production potential because of the double archer ranges compared to only one from Hart. And he's been able to get Fletching up now as well, while Hart on the other hand has not gotten it yet. 
certainly helps the Gibbaton did save or did pocket the resources that Heart, on the other hand, utilized to go for the Mana Towns upgrade, for instance. Yeah, we have some skirmishers over here for Heart. I think if Gibbaton plays his cards right over here, it's not going to be enough skirmishers yet. We have only two. There's a third one coming up. And especially with double archer range production, Gibbaton should be able to get to numbers where two or three skirmishers are not going to make too much of a difference. We'll see. And control is extremely important in a situation like this, especially when Heart's got the hail to take advantage of as well. So Gibbaton's gotta be careful. One of the archer ranges is going down though very soon. Forcing repairing villages, and that's the unit control that I'm talking about. That's good from Jubaton. Here we go, Heart. He pushes Jubaton away from the berries, away from the archer range. Yeah, and Jubaton's taking his time. He's taking his sweet time. Heart on the other hand though, he's been going for fishing ships a lot. He's got nine. He's the only player to have gone for an additional pawn as well. And he's got a few additional fishing ships coming out. So no wonder his economy is looking a little bit stronger right now. And by a little bit, I mean a lot actually. But let's take a look at this. Jim and Tom is roaming around. He's gonna try to flank these units and that's a lot of skirmishes now. It's looking a lot rougher for Jim and Tom to take the engagement over here and Heart's unit control. It's pretty decent, but of course we have some scouts over here for Jibaton. We're gonna see if he can make use of the scouts to take the skirmishers down before the archers get cleaned up. And it seems like it's not going to be the case. The scouts, they are taking longer than the skirmishers are taking to take the archers down. And of course, the bonus damage from Blue's units will allow him to clean up for the most part Jibaton's military. And in the end, while the skirmishers got cleaned up over here, Hart's still in a better position he ended up. Taking a big chunk of cross archers down, sorry for Jibaton, so that's going to prevent crossbows in the castle age. Uh, Hard was able to click up to the castle age earlier as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and it's... It's a little rough. It's a little rough for Jibaton right now. He might have a higher military count over here, but these are fuel age units. And Hard's gonna be in the castle age very soon. It's not going to take more than just a few nights for Hard to clean this up. And he's got the stable already on the way. What happened to the building? Everything on fire? Oh! It's open though! Hold on. Freaking hills, man! Freaking hills! That's a villager going down! Jibaton's gotta take advantage of this. He's going over the wood line. Pushing hard the way. Yeah, how on earth is this open? I have no idea. Just a jump fire stuff. It's the Mobius hill. Good defense for Heart. Mostly what Jibaton is going to achieve out of this push is just decreasing the efficiency of Heart's economy a little bit. For a while, right? So Heart's going back to work over here. Another Castle Age is here for the Bull player and we will see the Knights come out. He's got once again just one stable though, so it's not going to be a full-on all-in Knight production. In the, on the right hand side, you were asking what happened to the building. So this one was on fire to the pressure from Hearth and Jibaton was able to keep it up, but he did delete whatever he had over here on the left. What, what is that? Is that the... No, it's not the blacksmith. I think it was the barracks, right? Yeah, he had the barracks over here. He deleted it in order to flank the units from Hearth, but in the end, kind of walked into his own demise. Hearth ended up getting a better trade in my opinion. So good to see on the way for the blue player, Jibaton. Doesn't have any stone to speak of. You already made use of the market to turn that into money and hard well he was already ahead in economy because of the more efficient fishing ships if he gets second dc up and starts pulling ahead in villager count in addition to that and i don't know how jibatong uh come ba comes back from a position like that hot scott this though certainly seems like it that's why i need to check over even if it looks super close yeah 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 for sure uh, ideally, right? But then again, maybe he did check out and he just didn't spot the, the hole in the place that it was. Like, for instance, if, if you go over here, you try to go for a diagonal wall and everything's connected. But then, like, horizontally, it's not. You know? 
I don't know. I, I don't know if that will actually be possible. But yeah, I guess it's also going to add to the APM, right? And there's only so much stuff that players can do at once. Villager in position for hard to duck a third pond while Jibotan's only on one. Hole happens? Yeah. <laughs> The thing about this though, is it's kind of like a black hole. Technically, you cannot see it until you get too close and then it's too late. And whoever gets too close over the well, it's too late if, if your enemy realizes about it earlier, right? But let's see, see Trick Shop's already up. Monastery on the way, so Jibotan's gonna go for a classic smash. The Saracen Monk push. He's got the man already up, hard. Alright, on 2TC, he's gonna try to be greedy about this one. With the third attack already up on the right-hand side, he's got three pawns, he's got 2TC, he's gonna try to play for full economy and Jibutan. He better try to punish this. He knows already. Just by virtue of not going for any of the extra pawns, he should be expecting, he should already make the assumption that Heart's there. Just by not going for the extra pawns, Jibutan should be assuming that Heart's going to be a hidden economy so he needs to put pressure over here that's the way it goes this is however not ideal for Jibutan. when you are the one putting pressure you want to be the one ahead in military count usually you don't want to be behind by both uh actually you never want to be behind by both if you're behind in military but you're ahead in economy eventually it's going to pay off if you're behind in economy and you're ahead in military you want to use your military to put pressure and punish your opponent's eco approach but so far Jibutan's actually not been able to make it work and hard Despite going for the most part for a fairly greedy approach over here with the extra pawns and the extra TCs and whatnot, he's been able to defend against Jibutan's push without too many issues though. The Magna shot cleared up the only siege that Jibutan was working with. And that's going to be about it. Repaid off and very early as well. But the thing about this is I think it's probably because Heart been on a stronger economy already from the fuel age. If he only started going for the extra pawns and the extra TC once he got to the castle age and Jibutan's pressure came up at the same time as, you know, Hart tried to make a play for economy, I think this would have been a very different game, but Hart took advantage of the extra economy since very early on, going for the second pawn over here, he got so many fishing ships out and... Well, Jibutan's got some knights over here which are looking good and... Military value is so much higher for Jibotong as we have for the most part skirmishers for Hart to defend himself with. Now that we have monks coming out from Hart, the knights seem like they are not going to be sufficient anymore. We'll see. We'll see a conversion coming up over there, and Jibotong's going to commit to it. He's bringing knights over, over the north, the crossbows as well. Conversions down the south won't really achieve too much. As we still have extra knights. For Jibutan, so he does end up cleaning out the converted knights, but he's got only two left over here. It seems like the TC is going to take care of that. Yeah. Jibutan, at the very least, did take the time, though, to go for chain barden armor, so these are probably the best knights you can get to raid with, but there's a lot of catching up for Jibutan to do. Already 23 higher population for Heart. And as stated before, is ahead not only in villager count but also in military count and now the monk play the monk play is going to make it rougher for Jibutan to keep on putting pressure so 30 seasons on the way now for Hart he's completely disrespecting the knights okay there we go he goes back right now but Jibutan was not going to try and take the engagement over there anyway because of the prospect for monks yeah and Jibutan's economy setup right now is basically to go for full push you know, I don't want to rule Jibutong out right away because I kind of gave him for death in game number three and he was able to come back and prove me wrong, so... I don't know, it, it seems like Jibutong right now, if he gets enough knights out, maybe, maybe he can make this work. He's got a good amount of mana mills, for instance, right? That should be good against the skirmishers. And if he gets enough knights that even after the conversions, he's still going to be significantly ahead in numbers. That should be enough for him to still get a, a lot of damage done, so we'll see. He's coming in, he deems this amount of knights enough to get the push going. And hard. 
Alright, it's an evil to target the, the conversions over here, so we're gonna see the magnets going down. We'll see how two magnets over here for Jibuton to put pressure against the TC of their heart. For the most part, the skirmishers, he was being a greedy boy, tried to save the resources to go out to the village. Take a look at that. Jibuton does not like it. And he will show. But he's not going to make this one easy for the bull player, but... While the push is looking good for Jibotong, it's still not enough though. How many knights do we have left for the red player over here? He's been losing a lot. Eight knights left. You know, if he can keep on producing, he's got four stables right now. He's got production from, from four stables. If he can keep on producing this much, eventually he should be able to produce more knights or to produce the knights faster than they go down to the TC and the skirmishers. But until he gets to that point, hard. Definitely still stands a chance of coming back, especially as he's going for the Pikeman upgrade as well. Jibutan needs to commit and kill the legends, I agree. I agree, and, and he needs to keep on going for as much production as possible, and honestly, not going for villagers the way that he's going for right now, or not going for right now, is borderline necessary for Jibutan. He needs to focus 100% of his economy towards shutting Heart's economy down. Because the bull player has already been getting away with all of this for a very long time. Defensive castle though for hard. Oh man, the plot thickens. This makes it so much harder for Jibatan to keep on pushing. But we have the crossbows over there. We have the knights over there. And hard might be losing a bunch of villagers. It's going to garrison these. We have the pikemen over there pushing the knights away. The castle gets delayed for the time being. And my lord, what a game! What a game! What series? Take a look at how much idle economy Hearts got over here. Way too greedy, yeah. Yeah, 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 way too greedy. And Jibuta? Jibuta's looking good right now, but he needs to seal the deal. The crossbow said, Is it impossible for Hart to finish the castle over there? Yes, sir. And the knights, they're taking villagers down, trying to repair the TC. That might be the CC going down very soon as well, we'll see. Nice conversion though. That's my favorite playstyle, just way worse. I know, right? <laughs> Every time that I've ever tried to go for something like this, I end up losing 3 manas to a single mango shot or something like that. <laughs> or all your crossbows. This is absolutely remarkable. Coming in, he's committed to it. The pikemen are starting to get to good numbers though for hearts, so now Jibatan's gonna need something against that. He's got the crosses over here, but he's gonna have to make a choice. Does he want to use the crosses to take the pikemen down and give Hart the opportunity to finish the castle? Or does he want to keep on denying the castle? Oh, but Hart lands a nice demo shot, actually, mango shot, sorry, against the crossbows and pushes them away. And he stabilizes, and you know what? Jibatan's push. Seems like it's not gotten him enough to come back into this game. He still has a lot of knights coming out. Yeah, it's because he stopped producing villages again. He started producing villages again, sorry. He, he probably wouldn't have wanted to keep on producing villagers so long as Hart was still alive. But yeah, in the end, Hart's going to get a castle up. He's going to keep all three TCs up. He's going to keep all three pawns under his control and Jibutong. Jibotong runs out of steam right away. Does not have any momentum anymore. There's a forecast coming up from Heart as well. Well, from this point onwards, as you would say, the writing's on the wall. Jibotong's fate seems all but sealed. And it looks grim. It looks grim for the red player. Can anybody here think of any way for Jibutan to come back from this position? I know that you always ask the caster to come to come up with a comeback condition, right, for the players, but I honestly have no idea how Jibutan will be able to come back from this position. In my opinion, the all-in push that he went for earlier was his best shot at it, but Hart played really well. He defended really well in Jibutan. You could make an argument for him maybe not committing quite as heavily to it, Simply by going for extra villagers in the end still anyway. Mm, but even then, even if he hadn't killed the villagers and he had gotten a few extra knights over, 
it was kind of rough. Maybe going for extra crossbows. The crossbows seemed like it was the missing piece, right? Because he had some... The knight in the castle, but then he couldn't use those to take the pikemen down. And the pikemen ended, ended up cleaning out the knights for the most part. So if he had more, if he had two groups of crossbows, then maybe he would have been able to keep on putting pressure, perhaps. Hard DC? Right. Power outage. Earthquake, maybe. Oh, boy. Jyotel's going out to the Imperial Age, but this is... One of those classic imp into GG kind of situations, at the very least from what it seems like right now. Like, what does he have to work with? 15 military units? 4 knights! And 11 crossbows. Hard, once he gets to the Imperial Age, he's gonna be on his way very soon. Should have a much stronger economy to go for pretty much anything he wants. Arbalesters, Hob of the Year, Trebuchets. The 4 castle position though, does not take anything. This one? Yeah, that is true. Could have been better. But I, I think because of the mining camps over here, I think maybe he had some old information about what was here. So he tried to deny this. Perhaps. But it's already depleted. The better player wins. Congratulations, Hart. Well, the game's not over. But it certainly feels that way, for sure. It will be the first to the Imperial Age. Alright, let's pick it from there. What can Jibaton do by having a head start to the Imperial Age that will allow him to come back? Hard right now, from Jibaton's position, you know that your opponent's got pikemen for the most part and then some skirmishers, right? You got Saracens, you do not get Cavalier. So your Knights wouldn't really scale too well in the Imperial Age. So he doesn't go for those anymore. Arbalesters could work with Bracer and Chemistry even against the skirmishers. Uh, but he doesn't really have too many right now. I guess Arbalesters probably would have been the best choice. Maybe some mangoes to work with as well. To further take the skirmishers down and then the, the Arbalesters take on the pikemen. Uh, but there is so much to catch up for for Jibutong. He's got to push Heart out of his base and then he's got to suppress Heart back home as well. So it seems like too much, right? Too much of an ask. Heart's going to be in the Imperial very soon as well. So Jibutong's lead is going to be kind of gone. The head start to the Imperial Age basically allowed Jibaton to research Arbalesters. He doesn't even finish researching chemistry and Heart's already gonna be up, so it doesn't seem like he had too much of a time advantage, right, to go forward and get anything done, really. Mamelux for the memes? Oh, Mamelux. I, I guess technically, right? Didn't the Mamelux get changed a few patches ago so that they will no longer take quite as much damage, but I don't remember what it is that got removed from the um, armor class. Was it the Cavalry Archer armor class that got removed? I think against Pikemen they will still die pretty easily, right? But I think the Skirmishers are not quite as effective anymore, right? Without the Cavalry Archer um, armor type, then they would not take quite as much. Okay, there we go, yes. Thank you, Fibos Natchez. I thought I recalled something like that. It's hard to even commit into a gold unit. Siege? I guess it's going to be trash and Siege. He's got Japanese, so the Hob of the Year are... I don't want to say as strong as a champion, but... 33% faster attacking is not too shabby. You can even raid. He's got the traps. Bombardkan is on the way for Jiwatan, that's good. I was about to suggest that. Japanese don't get it. So the trebuchets could go down. If he plays his cards right, where are the... Okay, there we go. He's producing from this one. Yeah, and population is extremely one-sided right now. Hard. Over twice the population count compared to Jibatong. It's funny because in this situation, at this stage of the game, usually when players go under 100 population, that can be a little bit of a... of a cue for them to call a GG. But Jibatong actually never really got above 100, I think. So this is his life. This is Jibatong's life right now. 100 population, perma stuck versus Hard, who is in 200 population. It's got resources for days. Freaking economy from Hard. The greediness paid out really well over here. And he's even going to have some units to defend himself with around the map. Interesting castle location, though, from Hard. It's got only two villagers. Honestly, he might be able to get away with it. All Hard. Has to do is trade this army for Jibutons and SGG. 
Seems to be like that should be about it. Premier Armor is coming out, so he will make a play for the Hub of the Year. Jibutong. Should be losing the castle over here. You gotta hand it over to the red player, though. Uh, he certainly is trying his darnest. Unfortunately, compared to just two minutes ago, Jibutong's population has actually decreased further. And hard. Well, not quite as high as just a minute ago on 200 population, but it's still going to be enough. For him to take the game as Jibatan taps out. Hart's gonna take the series over here with a final score of 3 to 1. Hart is the sixth player to move on to the gold stage. While the. Actually, the seventh player, right? Because we already know Hong series results. And the two final players to move on to the gold stage, we are going to find out tomorrow. Start the 16 GMT, we're going to have the two final series of the Silver League. So for military, we have a better than 5 to 4 KD ratio for Jibatong. In the end, it did not matter because the economy was just so much better for Heart that it more than offset for the better KD from Jibatong. And you gotta keep in mind as well that because Heart was going for trash units for the most part, while the KD might be better for Jibatong, it kind of needed to be better because Jibatong was trading more expensive units compared to Heart. So stronger economy with a fairly cost-efficient KD for Heart. It's going to result in the bull player taking game number four over here for a final score of 3-1. He moves on, Jibutong, he gets knocked out.